Hi, everyone. It's so good to be with you today. My name is Esther Jones of Study Abroad Student Services. And today we have a wonderful treat for you guys. We have one of our uh, Study Abroad uh, One SAS partners from Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, NATE for short. And with us, we have Rupinder Pahar. And we'll call her Rupi for short. She said, call me Rupi. I said, okay, great. So we're really excited to have Rupi on board this afternoon, this evening, to share um, some really important information concerning uh, NATE and the programs that are available there. For those of you who uh, may not be familiar um, with um, Canada and Alberta, where NATE is located. Look forward, um, please look forward to getting a lot of information. It's gonna be a packed session and we're gonna have a lot of Q&A as well. Um, so we look forward to all of it. And without further ado, Rupi, welcome. Thank you, Esther, and hello everyone. I'm so pleased to be here today with all of you. Um, in the next few minutes, we will be, I'll be doing a short presentation and I'll introduce everyone to the city of Edmonton, Alberta, where we are located and talk about NAID and our programs. Um, and in the end, we'll have, we'll leave enough room for any questions that you may have. So let me quickly share my screen here. And Esther said, yes, my full name is Rupinda Parhar, but you can all call me Rupi. Um, it's easier to pronounce. <laughs> So here, yeah, there you go. That is one of the um, um, campus, main campus buildings here that you see. Nate, Nate has a huge campus, and this is just one of our newest buildings, and it's very beautiful. It's also called the Cat Building. And so let's talk about Nate here. So Nate was founded in 1962 to address the employment training needs in Edmonton. It is one of the largest polytechnics in Canada. Polytechnic education is the same level of study as university or college in Canada. And um, I know we get this question asked a lot of times, are you a university or your college? So that is why I thought that it's important to mention this here. We have more than 40,000 students at our campus and over 2,300 international students from over 88 countries as of right now. NATE has long-standing relationships with industry and they help us to create our curriculum and offer established work placements to students. NATE has helped thousands of students, individuals in developing successful careers. And we have over 212,000 alumni. Some of our alumni include successful business owners, filmmakers, Olympic gold medalists, science and engineering professionals, IT professionals, politicians, TV personalities, and many more. I can go on and on. <laughs> so um, employment rate of a graduate is quite high, as you would see on this slide here. Overall empl employment is a strong 80%, or it's actually more than that. It's close to 90%. Um, we did have the COVID pandemic in 2020, 1920, 2020, and then 2021. But irrespective of that, you can see that um, our graduates are successful in finding employment opportunities within a year of graduating. Education at NATE is a great return on investment. For example, if a student takes NATE's Bachelor of Technology program for two years, they will spend around $38,000 Canadian dollars. Uh, within a year of graduation, they can expect to be employed earning on an average of around 85000 um, So within a year of graduation, you can expect to make double of what you spend on your tuition at need. So it is indeed a great return on investment. Um, so Nate's graduates can find employment across Canada, but most of them you will see that um, students do decide to end up staying in Alberta, mostly in Edmonton. Um, so we've just divided the regions here, most of them in central Alberta, north Edmonton, southern, sub southern Alberta, and so they are all over um, Alberta. This is the map of Edmonton, Alberta, just in case you're not aware, because I know everybody knows Ontario and maybe BC, 
Uh, but people do end up asking me, so where is Edmonton? So I always carry my map with me to show you where exactly we are located here on the map. So very close to BC, across from the um, US border as well. Um, globally, Alberta has the third largest reserve of oil and gas in the world, and therefore the largest in North America. There are no provincial sales taxes in Alberta. This means automatic savings on every single item you buy or service you pay for. In other provinces across Canada, there are provincial taxes as well. So in Alberta, you end up paying only 5% taxes versus if you're in Ontario, BC, you end up paying more than 13% taxes, which is a huge saving as, as you can see. Um, the average uh, minimum wage is $15, but I, uh, I, I know that we are going to be increasing the minimum wage. It's soon going to be $16 an hour, which is really great. The cost to live in Alberta is one of the lowest in the country. So you can earn a healthy wage while paying low living costs such as rent or income tax. Um, the Alberta Healthcare Insurance Plan is free for international students with a valid study permit. So that's another thing which is free. So free, free provincial healthcare. Other provinces you do have to pay um, for the healthcare as well. You will, this means, what does this mean? This means that you'll get free access to doctors' visits and hospitals. And once you graduate, you will be able to keep your Alberta health card if you have a valid work permit. And furthermore, Alberta offers international students um, free, okay, this is, yeah, so just, just free healthcare. <laughs> Okay, now let's do a comparison here um, of the different provincial taxes by province. For context, so you can see an average starting salary healthy is 40,000 Canadian dollars, I would say. So I hope this helps to understand the amounts shown in the screenshot here. This information is from the Government of Alberta Treasury Board and Finance showing a comparison amongst the different Canadian provinces. And the com comparison is very evident there. You can see Alberta is on the top of the chart in terms of paying taxes. So definitely you're saving a lot there. And you can see where Ontario is and where BC is and other provinces are in terms of paying taxes. Here is a sample of the outlook for job openings in Alberta, where the main sources will be economic growth. So you can see this is the comparison here in 2023, 2024, 2025. So if you were to start your program, say in winter 2024, you will be a graduate by 2025. So here in this outlook, you can see um, the expansion demand is the number of jobs that will become available. So you can see the growth there, 32,000, 38,000. This is across Alberta. So there's lots of job opportunities in Alberta, which means that once you graduate, there will be absolutely no problems finding a job, especially in Alberta, because the, the job opportunities are more and the people are less here. And that is why you're, we are seeing a lot of people migrating to the province of Alberta from BC, from Ontario, and from other provinces just because of this factor here. Um, Edmonton is the capital city of Alberta. Um, it, you can see we, uh, we have a very less population of only 1.3 million, population density of 123 people per square kilometer versus Toronto has 4,300 people per square kilometer. So you can see the difference between 123 people versus 4,300. So you know how crowded Toronto is. Um, and according to Statistics Canada, Edmonton ranks third behind Vancouver and Toronto for the highest immigrant retention rate for those who have moved here and have stayed here after five years. So this is the total base net cost, anywhere between 26,000 and 36,000 um, for a program that you would be taking. 36,000 is for programs that is um, health sciences programs, but if you're taking programs like business administration and engineering diploma programs, then you would be paying around anywhere between 24 to 26,000, even 26,000 is slightly on the higher side. And the living cost would be um, approximately $11,800 if you're living downtown, very close to the university. If you stay further away, then you can even 
um, say a few hundred dollars more and you can maybe survive in 10,000 to even less than $11,000. So as you can see here, the employer satisfaction survey in 2019, 2020, um, and 2021, where we surveyed more than 800 employers of NAIT graduates, over 98% 90, of our employers are happy. 100% um, of the employers stated that they would hire NAIT graduates in the future or recommend NAIT graduates. And polytechnic education is based on four pillars, which is technology-based education, industry partnership, applied research. When I say um, industry partnership, that's because we have a very strong connection with our industry partners. That means the um, employers in Alberta are have a great relationship with Nate. Um, they work with us when we are designing the curriculum. Um, so our curriculum is, is based on latest technology and feedback received from our employers. Um, if they come and tell us that, you know what, we have introduced a new software, we immediately introduce that to our students. Um, and technology-based, means that in applied research, it means that it's 50% theory and 50% hands-on, which means that you're not studying 100% of the times. We, we make sure that whatever you study in your classroom, you get enough time to apply that theory as well. So we have enough lab rooms. We get projects, live projects from our employers um, where the students are involved. They connect with the employers. They get to work on live projects and solve uh, latest problems that industry problems that they may have right now. So as you can see, most all of our programs, I would say, are eligible for a study permit plus a post-graduation work permit. There are co-op opportunities available as well. Some are paid, some are unpaid, but most of our programs have co-op opportunities, which means that you can find work placements while you're studying. Um, provides Canadian education, credential, and work experience that creates immigration pathways if that is what you would be looking to do in the future. My return of invest investment, as we've already discussed that. And we also have a strong international student support system on our campus. Um, so NATE is centrally located and is easily accessible. This is a screenshot of the LRT station, which is very close. It's next to our um, campus. The trains, the LRT ends at the station and it begins from the station as well. So we, and for housing, we do not have um, campus housing on our campus as of right now, but around the neighborhood of Nate, we have so many apartments, apartments and students are living and sharing their rooms there. But we also have an understanding with the University of Alberta and McEwen, which are like eight to 10 minutes um, with through LRT and you, if you are a student at NEED, studying at NEED, enrolled in a program, you can connect with them and you can live there at their campus. Now let's talk about the schools, the major four schools that we have. So we have the J.R. Shaw School of Business, School of Applied Sciences and Technology, School of Health and Sciences, and School of Skills Trades. And we also have academic upgrading. Ac academic upgrading may not be very handy, but it's for those who would like to just increase their competitive average. Say you have a 60% average, and the program that you're wanting to take requires a 70%. So maybe you, you want to just upgrade your courses, or you want to take an equivalency test, you want to challenge a test, you can do that through the academic upgrading department so that your scores become competitive enough to apply for those programs of your choice. So let's, let's talk about the individual programs in detail. So we will begin with the School of Business. Our business school is one of the largest schools in Western Canada, educating more than 6,000 students. Um, business is the common thread in every industry and graduates of our business programs leave Nate ready to make an impact. Uh, students have networking opportunities, as I, as I did mention, and work placements with our industry partners. Nate ensures it does not overtrain large groups of students to ensure they can find employment once they graduate. So we have very small classroom sizes, unlike other universities where you go, you may have 100, even I've heard 150, 120 students in a classroom where the instructor does not have an opportunity or the students as a student, you do not have the opportunity to in individually connect with your instructors. But at Nate, we've made sure that all of our classroom sizes are very small, depending on programs, it may be as, as low as 23, 22 students in a classroom, 
or a maximum of maybe 35 to 40 students, and you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your instructor. So we offer diploma programs. A diploma program is a two-year diploma program. Um, we offer that in accounting, entrepreneurship, innovation, and finance, human resource management, um, management and marketing. And then you can transfer to a bachelor's degree. You can either directly apply to a bachelor of business administration, or you can just, some international students, they don't want to overcommit or commit to four-year degree program. So what they do is, they apply to the two-year diploma program. They go out, they get a three years post-graduation work permit, they work, and then they apply for their permanent residence. Once they become a PR, they come back to Nate and then they continue with the year three and four, and then they end up paying the domestic fee, which is a very smart way of saving money. Or you can just straight away apply to our bachelor's degree. Our bachelor of technology is very popular as well. It's uh, year three and year four. So if you have already completed a two-year diploma, say you've been to uh, a, techno a technology school or an engineering program, you've already completed two years, then you can apply to this program at year three and year four. So it's only two years and you get your bachelor of technology. Then we have hospitality management, applied financial services, and you can look at the academic requirements. So if you, you only need a CX, uh, CXC or a CSEC, uh, with an English and the math grade of one to three to be eligible for our diploma programs. Yes, if you apply to the bachelor's degree, then you would need more subjects as well, your sciences or your social studies, whatever other subjects that you may have completed. But if it's diploma, you only need an English and a math and you don't have to have CAPE. As long as you have CXC and CSEC, you're good to, good to go ahead. Now let's talk about our School of Applied Sciences and Technology. Um, through the School of Applied Sciences and Technology, we offer around 44 programs that are tailored to the needs of the industry sectors to drive Alberta's economy. You'll see our graduates working in the numerous infrastructures, buildings and technology and engineering projects across Alberta and Canada. These blue headings are the sectors and you will see a few highlighted programs in each. For some sectors, there are more programs that are not listed because of our limitation on how much we can present on this slide, but you can definitely go to the website and check out our programs. Searches, clinical procedures and data analytics. Um, usually they end up in healthcare, pharmaceutical, food or oil and gas. And then we have renewable resources and environmental services. Students here go under conservation and managing sustainability. Energy is for students interested in the oil and gas industry. As you know, Alberta has the third largest oil reserve in the world. You will be learning about the extraction, distribution, and processing of these fuels. And again here, I have the entrance requirements. It's English, math, physics. Um, for, for your CXC, again, we don't need CAPE. So one thing to remember is we do not you do not require to have CAPE in any of the, for any of our programs, as long as you've come successfully completed CXC with grades between one to three, you're good to apply for our programs. But the important factor is that you should have completed CXC. It's not just these subjects, but you should, we need to see your completion certificate as well. So moving on. Again, under School of Applied Sciences and Technology, we have construction management and design, which teaches students to assist in the management and design of construction and civil engineering projects. As Edmonton is a booming city that is quickly developing, construction is a great industry to be in. IT is a fast-paced and quickly growing industry in Alberta. As per a recent report by Alberta Enterprise Corporation, Alberta is now home to more than 3,000 tech companies, and that's a 233% increase in the last 10 years, and it is still growing. Um, manufacturing and automation, it involves electronics and mechanics. As many industrial and manufacturing processes become more automated, the career opportunities in this area is only continuing to grow. And our nanotechnology engineering program, for example, is the only one of its kind in Canada, which is very, very popular and interesting. So if you're interested, you can go check it out on our website. Uh, media and communications is for students who like creating meaningful content to connect with others. Now let's go on to our School of Health and Life Sciences. Um, the School of Health and Life Sciences has a rich tradition of educating allied healthcare professionals. 
While not doctors and nurses, allied healthcare professionals are medical professionals who work to prevent, diagnose, and treat diseases and illnesses. They also support healthcare systems and apply scientific principles and evidence-based practices to assist patients. So we offer 16 programs to international students in the School of Health and Life Sciences that are either two-year diplomas or one-year certificates. We use um, NATE user simulations with state-of-the-art equipment models and actors, and we have a full-scale simulation center providing scenarios in a safe and controlled environment. Dental technology, for example, teaches you to make dentures, crowns, and other orthodontic appliances. On the other hand, a denturist technician will be working closely with patients to assess, design, and insert these dentures. And we ha even have a dental clinic on our campus and real patients that students work with. So as I said, we strongly believe in applied research and all of our students get to work hands-on on all of these programs. So finally, we come to our fourth school, which is School of Skilled Trades. Um, school of Skilled Trades offers around 14 programs and diplomas and certificates to international students. Nate's School of Skilled Trades is a leading training provider to students in these programs. So skilled trades, as we all know, play an integral role in the safe operations of industries, especially for Alberta's economy. And skilled trades in Alberta are strictly regulated. They are there are strict regulations on work hours, pay increases, and health and safety. We also have our very popular culinary arts. Uh, we have a chef in residence program that provides students with the rare opportunity to learn firsthand from some of the best chefs in the world. Um, this program brings famous chefs from around the world to Nate to share their insights and expertise with students and expose our students to innovative cooking techniques and diverse culinary trends and styles. So if you check out Ernest, E-R-N-E-S-T is one of the most uh, fine dining restaurants in Canada. It falls under the top 100 restaurants for fine dining in Canada. Um, you can see that our culinary students and hospitality students basically run that restaurant. And you should see the pictures posted. They are just amazing and out of the world. Now, let's talk a little bit about the entrance requirements and how to interpret. So if you go on to the specific program pages on our website and you look at the admission requirements under entrance requirements, how they will be posted as is in the screenshot here, it says entrance requirement English 30-1, 30-2, or math 30-1 or 30-2. So we've given the equivalency here that is equivalent to your CXC or CSEC or K. And your math 30 is equal to your grade 12 level math, math 20 is your grade 11, and math 10 is your grade 10. So all our 30, 20 levels, sorry, your 30 levels are all equivalent to 12, 20, 20 levels are equivalent to our grade 11. And on that note, we've reached the end of the session. I'll stop sharing my screen here. And we'll open up the room for any questions. I hope I didn't go too fast. <laughs> I think it was quite good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ruthie. Thank you so much. I think it was very informative. Um, I myself took a lot of notes. Yeah. Um, to make sure that I understood and um, I believe that most um, most persons were able to follow. So yes, it's the exciting part of our segment where we're opening up for questions. All right, guys, so there is Q&A. And if it is that you have questions, feel free to ask. We are more than happy to hear from you and to get a sense of um, what, what questions you may have. All right, guys, would you like to um, begin asking questions, guys. If not, I have my own, right? I, I love to start. I don't mind starting, yeah? Sure, go ahead, Esther. <laughs> okay, they're a little shy, so I'll just go ahead. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> All right, so um, question, what is what exactly is a co-op? I know a lot of times persons aren't really clear on what a co-op is exactly. What, does, what purpose does it serve? What is it? So co-op is basically a work placement. So for example, you are working, um, say, so you're studying in electrical engineering. So you've completed one year. 
So you get a time four months period, usually during a semester. It's usually after you've completed your second semester, you get an opportunity to work and apply your learning. So we have networking opportunities with our employers. So we work, as I said, that Nate has a, a relationship with all our industry partners. So they we have a tie up with them. So some of our programs will come up and offer those co-op opportunities where students do have to apply to those opportunities. There will be an interview for some positions where it's mandatory, like our School of Health and Life Sciences co-op is a mandatory option, so you don't have a choice. You have to have to work in those placements, so there may not be an interview component. But, but there for other programs like engineering programs or you're taking the bachelor in business, so we will we will introduce you to our employers um, and we'll give you we will let you give you create networking opportunities as in we'll in, invite the employers to the campus. They will talk to you and then you can connect with them and they can offer you a work placement in their company. So you work with them for four months. You, you can sometimes even take a semester off and you can just use that semester. Usually the students work uh, during the summer summer term because they study full time from September to December and then they study each full time from January to April. But then from May to August, you have the official summer term off. And that is when you use those four months to work um, and apply whatever you've learned. And then you come back, you complete your second year. And then if you did well for that um, employer, maybe you can continue working part time with them once you're working because as an international student, you can work 20 hours a week. So you can work full time um, during your work placement. And then once you come back to school, you can continue working those 20 hours. And then if the employer likes you as soon as you graduate, boom, you already have the job in hand. More than 90% of our students retain are able to retain the jobs. And I think that's fantastic. It's actually refreshing because I think that traditionally um, persons believe that, okay, college, university, or attending, um, studying abroad, right, at an institution. Then after that, then go try to figure out where can I fit, where do I fit in, how does this work? So Nate and what Nate has going on with respect to encouraging students and in some cases saying it is mandatory that you have work experience and that is incorporated into the actual degree program. I think it's brilliant. It's a brilliant, yes. brilliant thing. You know, yes. and as you said, so it means then that Nate has these very close relationships in the industry, in the city of Edmonton in particular, right? And um, so persons are able to work and work and maybe go to class, right? That's, that's yes. outstanding. Especially, especially in the province of Alberta, Nate is very popular and it has a name. Um, but now I do see that there are so many students who go to Ontario, but then they want to transfer. So they complete one semester and then they realize the cost of living is so high. And then they hear from students in Alberta or in Edmonton, why don't you come or transfer to Nate? It's really cool here. The cost of living is very less. And then they they give us a call and say, hey, can we, can we transfer? Um, I know that um, students, it's exciting to go to a bigger city and you want to move to a bigger city, to a fast-paced city. But if the intention is to first study um, and learn the skill set and be successful, I highly recommend coming to a technical university where it's all hands on, where it's all practical learning. It's not just like reading lectures, lectures, it's nothing like that. You can be also have student ambassadors where you can connect with them on the website. You can chat with the student ambassadors and they can show you what it is like studying at NEET. And from my personal example, when I moved to Canada, of course, I wanted didn't want to go to Alberta. I went to Vancouver and then I went to Toronto. I was struggling to find jobs because it was so competitive that my resume was not even being shortlisted. Finally, my sister told me to come to Edmonton and I moved to Edmonton. And then I had a job offer from everywhere I applied. So whether it was the city of Edmonton, whether it was the TELUS internet company, whether it was the um, the CRA, the federal job, whether it was Nate. So now I had all these job offers and I was like, oh, so now I have to pick and choose. And I am not joking, this is true. And of course, and the salaries are so high in Alberta that 
within my first five years coming, starting my life with zero dollars in my account, within five years, I was able to invest in a house. In other provinces, you can only dream of getting a house. If you 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 cannot even buy a one bedroom house, you just keep renting and making ends meet unless you you're lucky and you get a very highly paid job, and that is true. You have <laughs> it's my actually, my own personal example. No, thank you for that because I think you hit the nail on the head on a couple on a couple of points. I was going to ask you, you know, what was it that uh, attracted you to NEAT? and of course by extension, um, Alberta. Edmonton, you know, what's different about it? But you just kind of answered all of those questions. <laughs> so that took care of that. Um, but that is that is amazing to hear that and the speed with which someone can um, be employed in their field of interest. Right? Yes, yes. So, so I have been at Nate for nine years. I've been in Canada for 10 years. So the first one year I was struggling moving from one province to another, deciding which way to stay. But then the nine years, I just gave my nine years to Nate. So which which tells that Nate only Nate not only is a good employer, it's a very good employer, takes care of its employees. Many of our international students, they find jobs within Nate itself, but then they have enough opportunities to go out and connect with our industry partners. So our students have a great feedback, our employers who hire NAIT graduates have a great feedback. Um, so if if there are if there is a competition or a job posting, a student from a university who's completed a four-year degree versus a student from NAIT who's completed a two-year diploma applies, the employer will happily hire a NAIT graduate because they know that this person has been outside on the road working with their hands versus this university degree students whom they would have to spend time training because this person has only theory. Uh, but the NATE student has the real practical experience. Um, and this is true. You can do your research. <laughs> I can hear that. And, and that is so true. You know, um, sometimes, you know, in the in other, you know, countries or spaces, you think, okay, you know, HR and yeah, well, you know what? HR is looking to see where you've trained because some some training institutions, they have that strong of a rep like NATE have a strong reputation for sending out candidates who can hit the ground running. And that's what you want. That's what you need. You know, um, many times international students, they head, head off to school and they're there. And then there's a whole, you know, realize, oh my gosh, I can't access this or that. And the, the entire thing backfires. So for those of us who are gonna who are on the live now, and for those of you who will listen to this recording, you need to have an entrance strategy and an exit strategy. You don't know what that is, contact us at Study Abroad Student Services. We'll help you with that information. But I'm saying to you that Nate is an example of that. It's a very clear example of that with results. And we have a witness here. Rupi has gone through it. She was in one province, guys. She was in one province. She worked there. And then transition when a friend said to her, why don't you just come to Edmonton, Alberta and come to NEAT? And she did. And everything changed at that point. I think it's great. I think it's outstanding. So uh, with respect to, I want to speak to super quick, if it's okay with you. Um, I want to speak to the CSEC and the CAPE. So traditionally, CSEC is all levels. Students do five years of study, five years of secondary school. They complete secondary school and they head off into technical programs most times. And then students who pursue A-levels, right, which is right what is known as A-levels, that is where students would pursue CAPE. That's in the English-speaking Caribbean. That's CAPE. So O-levels is CSEC and A-levels is CAPE. Um, now, I heard you mention a couple of differences. So in terms of entrance requirements, CSEC, persons who have pursued CSEC, not CAPE, just CSEC, up to all levels CSEC, secondary school or in hand, diploma in hand, but they finished CSEC level. What kinds of programs would a CSEC student be able to pursue at need? They can take all of our certificates, diploma, or degree programs because CSEC is equivalent to grade 12 in Alberta. So um, from what I understand, 
um, and from our experience from the students who've already applied to NATE from the Caribbean region. Their CSEC, we see that they see in CSEC, um, it's good quality education, which meets our, it's similar to our grade 12 courses that we teach here in English, math, whether that's physics, chemistry, bio. Um, so as long as you've successfully completed all of these courses with grades uh, between one to three, I think that 70% and above would meet our requirements. So anything below that, um, you may not end up uh, being accepted, but as long as you've successfully completed the CSEC, yes, for sure. But the entrance requirements, yes, you do not need all five. We will not be looking at all the five um, subjects that you've completed. Say, for example, you've applied to chemical engineering, then we will only be looking to see whether you have uh, passed your English, math, and chemistry. Yes, with the full CSEC completion certificate, but we will be focusing on these three courses that we, you need to have these three subjects for sure. So what I understand, everybody studies English and math. Um, so which means that you automatically meet our business administration, culinary, hospitality, applied fund. There's so many programs where we only need English and math, but all our engineering programs may either need a physics or a chemistry, and I'm sure you would have those as well. So basically, in short, you would meet all of our, our requirements for all of our programs offered at NATE. That's outstanding. That is amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you for clarifying that. That's a big one for our Caribbean students. So on behalf of everyone from Bermuda, I'm sorry, well, Bermuda, Bahamas, no. From Jamaica down to Guyana. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. No, I got that when I was last time at the fairs. Then everybody's yeah. like, oh, you accept CSEC? <gasps> yes, we do. They were like, oh, can I? <laughs> yes, 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 guys. That's a sigh of relief. Huge relief. You mentioned something that was a big deal. Um, and so you mentioned that Alberta has the third largest oil and gas reserves, right, um, in Canada. And then you also mentioned that in Alberta alone, there are 3,000 tech companies. Wow. 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 So my question, yeah, my question is, you know, 3,000 tech companies, just how intense is is the need for persons who are qualified and working? There is a huge demand for people um, who have that the right kind of education, uh, but because people have been focusing um, on other provinces like BC and Ontario, which are more popular, we've suddenly seen a very high increase in the number of people moving down to Alberta, so the the uh, I would say the there has been a sudden hike in our property prices as well, which is um, which shows that how many people are moving into Alberta, which still is an, as compared to other provinces very cheap. So for example, if you wanted to, I know personally, um, my niece she bought um, two bedroom condo condo um, in Toronto not even downtown Toronto, it's a little away from Toronto for $850,000. Um, and if for $850,000, if you go on, if you Google that information and if you want to buy a property in Alberta, you can buy a full single family home, um, like a big villa or something, a huge space, which will be more than 2 million in BC or in Alberta. So that's the price difference. But yes, um, 3000 tech companies, more and more people, business entrepreneurs are moving down to Alberta because they have realized that this is the newest place to be. That is why um, the Alberta nominee programs, we are opening up more pathways. We are inviting qualified uh, people from other countries to come and apply through express entry or to apply uh, through those immigration pathways and move to Alberta because Alberta definitely is looking for qualified people whether that's your construction sector, whether that's oil and gas, whether that's IT, even business administration. So uh, I think this is the place to be in right now. Um, and yes, as for our stats reports and other reports that we are seeing comparing other provinces, um, there is no space in other provinces to do anything right now. You want to open a new business. There are so many businesses, what do you do? You want to find a job. Uh, for a single job posting, you an employer receives more than thousand applications. How? What are the chances of you being shortlisted versus when you apply for a job posting in Alberta? 
And if, especially if you're a NAIT graduate, your resume just bumps up, you're on the top priority list um, and the employers are more than happy. And if you already had an opportunity to network with them while studying, then you already have that relationship. And another thing that I wanted to add that I think I didn't mention was that our instructors who teach at NAIT, they are not those regular instructors or teachers who've been teaching all their life. These people are actually people from the industry who've actually spent their entire life working in the industry. Like we have electricians um, who have worked as an electrician, but now they are instructors. So their way, their, their teaching method is so different. They teach you the real life scenarios of what they've experienced in the industry versus an instructor who's never worked in the industry, but just knows theory and teaches you like, this is what you do when this happens versus, you know what, there was a situation this happened and this is what we did. Um, so they're teaching you real life examples. So that is a very important point here. I think also in a classroom, it's 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 great conversation, you know, to yes. make sure things make sense. And, and that's, you know, for those of us who are aware, that's really the basis for great networking as well. So yes. for those of you listening in, this is not just, you know, go, you know, go to school, go home, go to school, go home. That's not the experience you're going to have no. at NEAT, right? Which is Northern Alberta Institute of Technology. That's not the experience you're going to, if not, if that's not what you want, you will not have that, right? Because it's really, life is what you make it. To some extent, to a great extent. So, if it is that you're looking to meet new persons, new people, and connect with new people and and network on another level, that's yes. how you do it. You know, I think this is a, um, I think it's great to hear, and it's very encouraging to hear because students would be thinking, "Oh my gosh," you know, traditionally, as you and I both know, coming from other countries, um, we think, "Okay, you know, the teacher says this and that," and then you just have to just sit there and just take it all in and get the work no. on and that's it you get an opportunity because as i did say that we have such small classroom sizes the instructor knows you by your name versus other universities where you're just a roll number um you never get an opportunity to ask any questions but here you have that one-on-one -on -one relationship the instructors because they are from the practical industry they have friends they have contacts they introduce you to them um they are available for any questions that you may have and when you're working um, in the labs, we have enough space for every single person to work individually. It's not like you're working in groups or I won't get an opportunity. Every single person in at NEAT gets an opportunity to work with their hands to experience uh, what it is to be working in the industry. And then that's why, when, as she Esther said, you just hit the ground running. 100%. Guys, any questions? Any questions? Thank you so much for this, Rupi. We're coming in for a landing. We have about 10 minutes left, guys. So if you have a question, now is the time to ask it. All right. Now is the time to ask your question. Okay. If there aren't any questions, I know it can be overwhelming and you don't think of questions right away. But if you if you come up with questions later on, you can always reach out to Esther and she can compile all the questions and send it to me. Um, I'm more than happy to respond to you, get back to you with all your questions. And I'm always available. I mean, we can do another quick session. If we have enough questions, enough people interested, then we can definitely um, have another meeting and I can come and um, respond to your questions. We can just have a FAQ session. A question for you with respect to uh, scholarships or financial aid opportunities. What does that look like? So, Nate, just this year, we've introduced entrance rewards because in each, earlier up until now for our international students, there were scholarship opportunities for newcomers, but they were very few in number. But once you completed your first year, then there were lots of scholarship opportunities where you just have to apply. So we have a lot of sponsors, a lot of alumni who then um, want to share um, and they offer bursaries to students. So there's the eligibility that you have scored a work GPA or you've, you've scored this much or this is the voluntary work that you've done based on the eligibility criteria that could be different. 
um, you were eligible for scholarships. But this year onwards, we've introduced the entrance rewards as well. What that means is that as a newcomer, as soon as you apply to a program, you don't even know at this point whether or not you will be accepted, but you set up your portal, you will become eligible to apply for an entrance reward. So by the time you're actually accepted to a program, you would also be, maybe you already have an entrance reward in hand. It could be anywhere between $500 to $3,000, depending on different rewards. So there's no restriction. You apply to one reward or you apply to multiple rewards. It really depends whether, whether you meet the eligibility criteria or not. So you just have to go through and apply. So yes, offer lots of opportunities to apply for entrance rewards for scholarships and for bursaries. Super quick question. Is there a specific link for those uh, entrance awards that students can go to? And of course, they do have to understand, once again, it's based on first admit, uh, getting admission and then applying, but at least they can take a look and see what's there. Yeah. So you you can definitely look through our scholarships um, for international students on our website, but for our entrance reward, it only becomes available for newcomers when you submit an application to okay. NATE. Um, so yeah, then it becomes available. So they start anywhere from 500 to, as I said, 500 to $3,000. Um, you are now, you have a NATE portal account, and then you can apply through that link um it's only becomes available at that point so unfortunately this time and not be able to share that okay i have a question from from the from one of our students and she asked me to ask you she said is there is it possible for her to bring with her a special needs child to class in this case the child is not the child is, is not um, necessarily, you know, sometimes with special needs, it can cause, um, it would require, the, start, the child sometimes requires much more special attention because it would naturally, not naturally, but sometimes maybe interrupt the flow of a class. That can be the case at times because it's special, you know, a special needs situation. Um, but in this instance, the person, the person has said that um, this is a special needs case that the child is non-disruptive. So they've asked what that would look like. Well, to be honest, I don't think I have ever come across this question, um, but I know that we have a learning services uh, department in our at our campus where international students can go to um, with such needs. I mean, uh, especially it is basically they focus on students who themselves need that those special needs, but um, for someone who has a child with that or that kind of a requirement, um, I'm not sure what the process would be. Uh, the best thing to do would be to connect with learning services and ask them um, how it would be, because then they would have to create, um, connect with the program and they would have to have a dialogue between the learning services and the native instructors to see if that is an option or not or how they can make sure that this student is successful uh, based on the needs that they have. I don't know if that uh, needs your, <laughs> I think if I've answered that, yes. I think, um, so it would be the, the section would be called, I was writing that part down, the division who would- add, Learning would, services, I think. Learning services, got it. Correct. Learning services. You can explore that on the website. Yeah, learning services at me. That's correct, services. yes. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Um, so we're coming in for a landing. We just have a couple of minutes left, guys. Does anyone have any questions? Any other questions? Let's see. All right. They said thank you. They said you're very welcome. Very welcome. So okay. So we've covered so many things today, this afternoon. Um, one last question for you. Nanotechnology, Nate is congratulations on being the first or the only one in Canada that carries a program in nanotechnology. What is nanotechnology? What is that? In a nutshell. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry about muting. Oh, I think you're muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> 
<laughs> so as I did mention, yes, Nanosystems um, is the only program of its kind in Canada. And in it, you will be exposed to face-to-face -face, hands on learning in our labs, including in our specialized clean room facility. In this program, you will learn basically about the fabrication and evaluation of micro and nanomaterials and devices commonly used in a wide range of industries, such as healthcare, smart devices, and energy production and storage. You'll learn how to operate systems and equipment used by nanotech researchers and manufacturing companies, such as the scanning electron microscope, which is used to obtain images of objects at the nanometer scale. So I'm not sure if this makes much sense to you, but I am not a technology person, but the admission requirements for this program is you, as long as you have successfully completed two main subjects, which is English and math. Besides that, if you have any one of your biochemistry, physics, or sciences in your CSEC grade 12 levels, then yes, um, you meet the entrance requirements for this program and you can apply. It is only offered once a year in September. It's a two-year diploma program. So once you've completed this program, um, it says that the industries that you can work in are research and design, health, environmental, manufacturing areas, microfabrication, sensors. So lots of opportunities. And it says that it also says that globally, nanotechnology is an emerging market that promises new and interesting opportunities across a variety of applications in many different industries. And in Alberta, Alberta now boasts a growing nanotech enterprise sector of more than 70 companies, which many located in the Edmonton region. So you can just see, we already have 70 companies uh, just in the Edmonton region. Wow, that is outstanding. And I think I heard you mention there's an 86% employment rate um, with students being able to get into their co-ops or internships even before they graduate and then hopefully transition through and stay on and, and you know that that is a possibility right that absolutely that is outstanding i want to thank you so much rupi for uh this afternoon this evening i want to thank you for your time um thank this you Esther. yeah it it has been a great pleasure. This is the first time I'm doing an in-person uh, virtual webinar for Trinidad. I'll be visiting soon as well this fall and um, love, looking forward to meeting with you and um, all our new students. Um, we are, I'm ready to welcome you. If you end up applying to Nate, please, free to, uh, please feel free to connect with me. <laughs> and uh, I, I can come and see you in person as well once you're here at the campus. See you all. Outstanding. And guys, you can reach us um, directly at 1-868-345-4846. I'm going to put uh, my contact information on WhatsApp in the chat. That's 1-868-345-4846. Or you can send an email to studyabroad at onesas.com. Okay, again, study abroad, all one word, at one, that's the number one, sass.com. On behalf of our wonderful uh, new partner, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, Nate Rupi, who is a fantastic resource and has done so much um, and is so, so wise. She's really, a, 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 there's a whole lot of wisdom packed in there. I want to say thank you again, Rupi, for, for the work. Thank you for um, being such a source of encouragement to international students. Um, it was so lovely to meet you last year. I do once again also look forward to seeing you in the Caribbean uh, this year in the fall. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for your time this evening. And should you desire to reach out to us, feel free to do so. And God bless. Have a great evening, everyone. Take care. Bye.